Yeah, and then, uh, not this time around, since it is the end of the year, we can look at it from maybe a different perspective. I know that Peter, he was going to be here, he was going to talk more about you know, profit and losses and you know, getting your employees reconciled at the end of the year so you can turn those into your account. But I kind of wanted to look at growing your business somewhat of a different perspective today. What I call miracle grow your business. So most people want to think at the end of the year is how they organize their business based on month or they based on um, you know like uh, quarterly. And you go through all these and you reconcile and put all together at the end of the year and you do your profit and loss and find exactly where you are financially. And you can you know and one of the other questions I'd ask you is how many people here actually take take advantage of depreciation and uh, deductions through an entity. So, you know, so most people, some people don't have entities. They, you know, they're doing it all, all personally. They're not actually taking full advantage of these things. But there's other things that you can take advantage of, like a new perspective. When you analyze, like what uh, David was talking about is analytics and analyzing it, is I want to look at new, the nutrition of your business. Where is your nutrition coming from? That includes funding, your resources, and the energy in which you have. Um, does all of your does all of your uh, business come from one person, or does it come from a group of people? Do you have you know two thousand people coming into your retail store um, during the course of a month, or are you just you, you simply service one particular client and that is your your business model? So you look at that and look at where that funding is coming from, how that energy is being accumulated into your business. Uh, the next section I'd like to look at is growth. How have you grown in the past year, if you've grown at all? Really look at that. Look at where are the aspects that were successful for you in your business model. And also try and be realistic and look at the things that you failed on, that you can actually maybe improve if you see, if you see there's still value there. What can you improve on? What ideas do you have for next year that will complement your existing models? Is there anything that you want to introduce, maybe add a new line? Say you're in, you're in clothing, you want to add a new line, you want to add shoes. Into your market, how are you going to implement that? How are you going to grow that particular part of your business? So you have nutrition, which is where your money is coming in. How are you receiving your funding and your resources? And then utilizing that properly to grow your business into new areas if that's something that you desire to do. Because we always want to stay fresh and new with everything that we do. So then after that, we go into What I call the uh, what Pierre's okay, uh, relevance and connection. How sensitive are you to your customers? How sensitive are you to your employees if you have them? Is there a way that you communicate with them? Do you have something in, in place where they they feel comfortable with you? You feel comfortable with them. So in other words, what is, what is the line of communication between you and your customers, you and your employees, your employees and the customers? You really got to analyze that and see if you can streamline that and make it better because that's going to be the lifeblood of growing your business as well, is, uh, is, is the sensitivity that also goes built into also the culture of your business model as well, how sensitive you are to the needs of the people you service. And last here, uh, the fourth, is uh, the uniqueness, what your specialty is, what you specialize in, the differentiating factors. Really think about what makes you unique because that is what you, that's really what you're selling in the end. Um, what, what can you do to implement over the next year that will bring greater value to those you serve? What aspects can you really focus on to, to grow your, your business model over the next year of that unique character, that specialty that you want to add into your business model? And how are you, you going to accumulate future customers with that? How are you going to get that? Having a clear vision and a clear statement will really help in that regard. So I kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of thinking things a little bit differently. Yes, Chris. Um, so what is um, what makes you unique? I wanted to talk about that. What if in my website I am too unique? Ah, okay. Well, you want to stay. Does that happen? Yes, it does. Okay, so you want to stay. You want to have your own unique style, but you want to be where people can actually respond and be relevant to those people, right? You don't want to be totally, you know, off your rocker where it's like, you know, people are coming to you because you're actually crazy or, you know, you're such curiosity because you're so out there. But you want to be relevant to people. You want to be able to, to really have a relationship with the, your customers as well. The problem that I'm having is that in my website, it tells you that I'm a writer, it tells you that I'm a photographer, and those two things work. 
work really well with each other. But then I also am a music maker, and I'm also a, um, a performer as a good fortune to the source follower. And all of those things together, um, it, it feels like it's too much. Well, which, you what you can do is you can you find all the really good aspects that you're, you know, that you like a lot in those, and you find a way to incorporate all that into one model if, if you can. Like, you know, you like all of these different things, all of these creative projects that you have at, at, at your disposal. Is there a way to actually put them together into a cohesive unit where you have form, you have function, you have all these things, and that way you, you take that to market? Because, you know, some people you may want a full service shop. They want to have music in their videos that they do. They want to have, you know, um, your your talents as a as a musician or an actor, you know, they want these things put in there, and you have these these, these skills and these talents that you can incorporate into your business model because these are things that you're passionate about because that's really what you want. You want that creative outlet, but also to be in a business environment where you can actually service people and make money doing what you're doing. So you bring in value to others. If that makes sense. So yeah. the things that you find valuable, all those creative outlets you find valuable, find a way to bring those under one under one roof if you can. Because that's, that's what people are going to find value in you, because that's what you're passionate about. So, yes, sir? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, but there's like two ways that you could go. One is to create a unique brand that, that puts everything under that umbrella and finds the uniqueness of that. Another way is to, is to create a number of niche websites. Mm. And, you can and separate them. Different, yeah, separate them. It's a lot easier to get found and known as a copywriter, for example, than as a copywriter, photographer, solar swallower. There um, you go. Yeah. And so yeah. they look like they're competing businesses, but they're really one and the same. You're just offering different things to different people. So if I want to come to you as a photographer, I can come to you as a photographer, and David, he could come to you as a performance artist and have no idea that you're also a photographer because it's on a totally separate platform. Do I understand? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think part of that too is if you're going to market, I market as an attorney, but I let people know who I am. I used to be in a country bank. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Sometimes because they also want to ident identify with you personally and who you are, especially so they can trust you. So there's a, there's a bit of trust. But I'm not marketing myself as a band leader. So that's not what I'm, that's not the business I'm trying to get. But you can also so, find a very close friend because they may be maybe like, well, really, I do that too, and all of a sudden you find yourself playing again. You never know, that, that very possible it could happen. So, so to bring it full circle, I just, what I really want to bring up is like, at the end of the year, yes, it's important to, um, to look at your P&Ls. Yes, it's important to reconcile all your taxes and find out where your money came from and to really look at how, how you can incorporate that to, to grow more. But I also want you to kind of think of, of, of business in four other parts too. I want you to think of uh, your nutrition, that's where it's coming from, where your resources are coming in. Really think about how that is forming your, your business model. Nutrition is important. Also, your growth. How are you going to take that nutrition to grow your business? How are you, what, are you, what are you doing if you are wanting to grow? What are you doing with that nutrition? Also, your speciality, which is, you know, do, do you want to add more aspects to your business? I've always encouraged people to, 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 to listen to people around them, to listen to who their customers are, who they're servicing, because those people are going to give them great feedback if they're really paying attention. And therefore, now you're giving your customers or your clientele what they want as well because you're, 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 you're getting your feedback. Like me, I own a retail store. I have people come in there all the time. Hey, can you get candy buttons or can you get Walnettos? And yeah, you know what? I sure can. I'll find those for you. There's a way I can do that and that builds customer relationships. It makes them very, very happy. And then, yes, and the, the fourth aspect real quick and then we'll go. So you have nutrition, you have growth, you have speciality, and then you also have the sensitivity aspect which is making sure you give the customers what they want. Yes, sir? Uh, the only thing I wanted to say is that It's a really good point. In fact, um, I, my wife, she's pretty, she's very, very aware when it comes to online stuff. And actually what she does is she actually looks for the ones and two stars. And that's the one she reads when she looks at people's stuff because that's what she's looking for because 
he's, he thinks that that's the most honest representation in a lot of ways. I, I hate to say that, but I mean, that's, people in those situations tend to say things that you, know, you normally would hear, oh, this is wonderful, this is great. Well, you can read those all day long. So yes, yeah, so those are important to get those too. But you also, if you do get one of those, handle it. Make sure that you're interacting with that customer. Make sure you, you fully understand where that customer's coming from because not only is it, that can be detrimental for you, but also it could actually be an opportunity for you to find out exactly how to correct that issue so you won't find those things, those things won't happen again. Well, um, one thing that you can do is so somebody posts a one-star review about you, and then everybody's reading it, right? And then you comment back to that post, and you tell them, Yeah, yeah, all, all very important aspects. Absolutely. That's, that's, uh, that's really good. I've, got, um, I've had so many businesses come to me saying, can you remove this bad review we have on Yelp? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and they've just been trashed by someone on Yelp. And you know, you can't remove it. Yeah. You cannot remove it, but... And you can't if, make everybody happy either, as much as you try. Yeah, if you come back with a, a comment that just like Chris said, you know, I understand you had a bad customer experience. I'm really sorry. Uh, let's talk about that. Let's work it out. And imagine you come to that website as a visitor, you come to Yelp and you see that horrible review and then you see the business owner coming back and, and inviting that person to talk about it, to work it out. Hey, I'll work with you. Um, that you know, I think people value responsiveness more than perfection. Yes. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so incorporate that sensitivity into your business model over the next year if you can. That being sensitive to the needs of your customers, listening to them, whether it's a positive review or a negative review, really take those things to heart because that's how you gauge on the scale that David was talking about where, where your baseline is, where your scale is. You're getting feedback from the people that you are servicing that you are working with. So anyway, but I appreciate everybody coming today and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to talk to you afterwards. Thank you so much. Thanks.